Hello everyone and welcome to NIM TV and uh, welcome to a very special video uh, where I look back at old short films I made back in the day. This is actually the second short film I ever made. Um, I already did a video like this um, talking about the first short film I ever made which was a Christmas short film that had come out on Christmas Day four years ago. Um, so it was Christmas Day 2017. Um, so I made that video and uploaded it on Christmas Day, so you can do go check that out. Um, you can also check out the actual short film if you want as well. Um, I, just to warn you, it's not very well made. It's, you know, I mean, that's the point of this series that I'm doing right now, uh, where I look back at these, uh, things I used to make, is to kind of show how much I've grown in my, uh, just video production skills, uh, film knowledge, production knowledge, and, and everything, and and yeah, just have fun critiquing uh, stuff that I had made back then, and uh, you know, just seeing how much I've improved. Um, so yeah, so I, I did that before, and now I'm doing it with the second short film I ever made, which was titled is titled Conflicting Thoughts. Um, now, if you find this on YouTube, you can watch this film on YouTube if you want uh, to get full context. Um, but if you watch it on YouTube, it's titled Conflicting Thoughts 2018. Uh, that's because there's actually two versions of it. I did remake it at one point in 2019, um, which eventually I might talk about that one, uh, once it gets to four years later. Um, so yeah, that's going to be kind of a thing I want to continue to do is, you know, for every time we get to exactly four years after a short film I had made or something like that, I would like to, you know, talk about it uh, and make a video like this because I think it's a really fun thing to do. So um, without further ado, um, let's get into conflicting thoughts, um, which actually, you know, before we get started, I'm going to give a quick uh, overview of the premise of this film. So basically it's a guy trying to write a short film screenplay and he's, you know, he is, he has writer's block, uh, and then he, like, falls asleep, and he, you know, takes a journey inside of his own brain, talking to his different personalities, the different sides of his personality, and, and everything, and, and, and getting advice from them, basically. So, um, yeah, uh, I really liked the concept, which is why I made, which is why I remade it, because I didn't like this original version um and also i i needed to make a short film for a class in uh 2019 once uh, fall of 2019 um and i was like you know what why don't i remake this so this is the original that i uh had based that remake on so yeah let's jump right in and see how it is uh so let's get started so this first off this title card um why isn't it playing oh there we go it's playing so first off i just want to point out this title card is does not look very good. So basically I took a shot of me typing conflicting thoughts into like a title card of a uh, script, basically of, of what a, this is what a, a title page of a screenplay would look like. Um, and then just threw a NIMP TV production over top of it. I don't think it looks good. Um, I think I did a much better job with this in the newer version of this film. Uh, but anyways, let's just move on. That's not important. Um, this seems to be taking a while to start up every time it plays. Okay, so, interesting thing I want to point out, um, is that, um, this, this, so this, this first shot, um, it's, I think it's funny that I have these, this, like, Darth Vader stuff in the background. So, I, I, this is the actual place that I used to, like, do work on my computer. Like, little office area, space area. Um, and so I wanted to do, like, the type of shot where it, like, starts on something close and kind of pulls out to see a full image of what's going on. Um, for some reason, my my video player is not working very well. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of what I did here. Um, honestly, it's not as bad as it could have been. I feel like, the, like, you could definitely tell there's a little bit of, like, movement in my camera, like, being pulled, the pulling out of the camera. Um, 
First off, I want to say right now, this is actually a phone camera. Um, I get an iPhone. I'm not sure which one. Maybe SE, I believe. Possibly. It's either SE, or like the original SE, not the newer one. Um, or an iPhone 5S, maybe. It's I, one of the two. Um, but yeah, like, I, I, I don't really think that the um, shakiness is horrible. Like... It's, a, it's an amount of shakiness that could be in, like, a real movie, um, I think. And, and, it, and it, it, it might actually help sort of add to the sort of anxiety, like, you know, feeling you're supposed to get in the beginning, honestly. Um, which is, you know, kind of the idea that I was going for. Um, the music here is just royalty-free music that I grabbed. Um, I was I kind of thought that it helped add to the sort of anxious anxiety that this guy character is supposed to be feeling here um i don't know for some reason this yeah so okay and then i did some cutaways to him typing in stuff to sort of show his uh you know his writer's block he can't think of what to write you know so so very simple opening uh opening sh few shots here he walks away um See, I, I, I guess the one thing I would really have to critique here, first off, is, like, set design, I guess, which I didn't really do any of. I just kind of did it exactly the way my uh, office area looks anyways. I think I, I straightened up the desk a little bit. Um, I decided to keep certain things. I was like, yeah, sure, you can have a water bottle and, like, a few books on the shelf. Um, one of which is Watchmen, which uh, I, I own, which I, I, you know, really like. Um so it's definitely a little bit cleaner than it used to be. But yeah, this room in our house has like, used to have like a bunch of just junk everywhere. Um, I don't use this room for, uh, you know, my desk space anymore. Um, but yeah, I, I think one of the biggest things I have to say, point out is just how not good it looks. Like if you look, the, first off, it's a little grainy uh, here and there, which, you know, a lot of that can definitely come down to the fact that it's just not a good camera. It's, you know, it's just a phone camera. It's not like a professional camera, obviously. Uh, but another thing you may notice is the color colors seem off, like as far as like, you know, white balance type stuff goes. I mean, if you know what that means, but basically it just means the colors are off. They seem very, very blue. That is because I, so I wanted to do a little bit with color editing here. Uh, something I had never done before, um, it, you know, that I think that's one thing I mentioned in my last video I did like this about my Christmas short film is that I didn't do any color editing and the colors were horrible. Um, but I think the thing is I went a little overboard with it. So basically what I wanted to do is in the opening section, I wanted the colors to be very, you know, very cold. Uh, and then at the end to be a little bit more warm and inviting because like at the end of it, he's, it's like supposed to be a more positive feeling because he finally, you know, worked through his writer's block. I wanted to do that, which I think generally speaking, isn't a bad idea. It's just, I went a little extreme with it. Like I, I think I turned some of the like knobs on my color editing up way too high. And to be fair, I really did not know what to do with color grading at the time I did not know anything about color grading at the time so I just kind of played with the colors I was like oh yeah make it look really cold and stuff and, and you'll notice in the end the final shot of this film it's like very warm colors uh, as well uh, but yeah I think generally the f first shot f considering that I'm it's handheld with a phone it's honestly not as shaky as I would think it would be you know like and I think this might be handheld too. I, I, this might be with a tripod. I don't know. I think a lot of this film was actually handheld with my phone. Because I had a phone tripod. I just didn't use it a lot. Uh, so this is just a shot of get, him getting his coffee. Which, I don't know. I feel like could have been a much more interesting shot. Like it's just... I I think the thing is like... So, so some of the shots... I, I When I will look at this, this one compared to my first short film. I can definitely tell that I put more thought into the shot composition than I did in the original, in the first short film. Uh, but I still didn't put enough thought into it. So, like, this shot, I think, generally is, as far as the general movement of the camera and everything goes, 
it's honestly not too bad, especially considering it was handheld. Um, I mean, it's a little, little shaky, but it's not like to a bad extent. It's like shaky to a point where it's like, it could be seen as like, oh, it was purposefully shaky, you know, like, like some movies do. Um, and it, it, it it might, I mean, you know, and again, it might help add to the ang anxious feeling you're supposed to be get in the opening. So I actually don't mind that too much. Uh, this opening shot too much and the way it pans over. So I think that's generally a decent opening shot. I like it for for the most part. Um, you know, and then it does a cutaway to show what he's doing on the computer, which you know is needed for context, obviously. Um, I do a lot more with my shots to like show what he's doing and stuff in the new one, um, in the the next one. But um, you know, I didn't do nearly as much with that in this. It was very, it was, it was, it was much more simple in this to establish his writer's block. And then the coffee shot. So it's, you know, I just kind of threw the camera there. Just like, yeah, go get some cop, pour some coffee. Um, pretty simple. So I I think one of the and then he goes back in the office, basically, which is, like, essentially the same angle as before. Um, so, I, I think the one thing that I really didn't like about this film when I, when I um, remade it was there's not a very big variety of shots. It's all very simple. There's a lot of, like, just one shot... And, like, I would only cut to another shot when it's necessary, right? Like, I only cut to a shot of, like, him going in the kitchen to get his coffee because, well, in order to show that, you have to cut, right? Um, so, I don't know. It seems very much like a lot of my cuts are out of necessity rather than out of trying to, you know, help enhance the storytelling uh, through visually. Um, I think it's generally... You know, I, I think that would be one of the bigger critiques I would have of this. So you kind of push in a little bit. So this shot, I like the idea of this shot. So I, it starts further away, it pushes in, and then, and I really like the idea of this. It doesn't actually turn out as well as I would have liked it to. Pushes in, pushes out. So I think, okay, so the actual editing of that shot, I think it generally edits pretty smoothly where it pushes in and pushes out. And edits very naturally and smoothly. But I think some of the main issues with it are, you know, again, the camera's a little shaky. And also things like, um, as you go down on the, the mug here, you can see, like, my shadow as I'm moving down. So it's a little, it's a little, it's a little iffy there. But I think the actual effect of the shot pushing in and then pulling out with the mug being completely empty, I think works pretty well. I think it looks pretty good. The, the transition is smooth, um, generally speaking, which which I, I, I really liked. I, I remember when I came up with that idea, I really liked it. Um, so, I mean, the idea, obviously, I think is, is it's, it's a transition to show the passage of time, right? Because, you know, the mug is filled and then it goes in and pulls out and it's empty. So, obviously, you know, he drank all... Time has passed, he drank all of his coffee. Um, so, I think that's generally an effective idea for a shot um i i do think i did it better in the in the the, the second film the the remake uh which i could talk about um and then i did another cutaway uh which is obviously to show you know that he's all that time has passed and he's done nothing because this is exactly what the page looked like when he you know was sitting there before um so i think generally i'm not this is definitely better than the, the Christmas short film, I think. Um, camera's just so shaky. It's just annoys me. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, color grading was an issue. I think that's honestly one of the biggest issues with the opening. Um, I mean, you can definitely judge things like, you know, the, there's a lot of grain here. You know, it's very, a lot of visual noise in this shot. Um, which, you know, realistically comes down to um, just the camera and the fact that it didn't have a good lighting. Not, not just the camera, obviously. If I had good lighting, that would have helped. Um, so, and then, like, obviously the set generally looks kind of messy. Like, 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 you could just see a bunch of crap on the floor over here. Like, I didn't notice that until, like, 
Like, because I, I put a lot of time into clearing off this desk, because this desk was a mess. Um, but then I, and I put a lot of the crap that was on the desk on the floor. But, <laughs> but, um, I, the, I was, it wasn't supposed to be in the shop, but I didn't notice it was in the shop, which I think that's one lesson I would pick up from this shots like this is always never take a shot and just say that it's good. Always check and make sure everything in the shot is the way it should be. If something's off in that shot, retake it, you know, fix that problem. Like you have to pay attention to everything in the shot. And I think that's something I did not do back then. Um, cause there's all this and I mean, some stuff in the background here, like this guitar here and this, these symbols here, those were there in the room. I could have probably moved them out of the way, but I didn't, um, you know, it, it's just things like that, that I needed to, uh, pay more attention to. Uh, but anyways, so he falls asleep. Um, so, so I think, yeah, the intro is much simpler in this version. So I actually, I actually kind of like that transition. So like it, it's kind of an interesting transition. It's just the music going boom, like a big, and then cut to black. It's kind of a nice little transition. But anyway, so that was the opening section of the, of the film. Um, I don't know if I have really a lot more to say about it other than, you know, the major issues would be, you know, color grading. I I mean, obviously, I didn't really know what I was doing back then, but color grading and then just kind of general cleaning up the set a little bit, making that look nicer. Um, I mean, lighting could have been better, but I didn't really have any lights at the time or anything to work with as far as lighting uh, or much at least. Um, so that's kind of a little bit more understandable. Uh, even if I did have lights, I wouldn't have known how to properly set them up probably. But um, anyways, so... This section uh, is now the dream section, I guess, or the in his head section. So I had this noise in the background. Two things. I, I don't know. So I have this like, it's like just this low humming noise. I, I, I needed something to signify that this is like unnatural or this is a dream uh, to give it a dream like quality to it, um, which I think is something I probably do better in the newer version. Maybe if I, I'll have to wait to when I when I get to that when I actually talk about that um, eventually, but uh, I think I do it better in that version. But anyways, so nice slow fade in to what's happening. Um, oh, I, I do kind of like that flash to white. What is this place? So these shots I think are all actually generally framed pretty well um, in the dream sequence. I think which. Which I actually really was was really proud of at the time. I think they were generally framed really well. Um, they don't look great. They're they're all handheld. Um, they don't look great from a lighting standpoint or anything like that. Um, but they are framed well. I think, you know. Um, so so I, I it's funny. All of these shots in this sequence are actually filmed in the same room that I the the first shot is you know the opening shot the only shot that was not in the same room was him getting the coffee <laughs> in this entire film um so yeah it was all it was all filmed in one day in the matter of like two three hours or so uh, but yeah so what i did was i added that sound effect and i also added a vignette uh over the the screen to kind of give it a dreamlike feeling um which you know i think generally is a good way to do it. Um, I think it works pretty well. Uh, but yeah, so I have him as himself, like the main version of himself standing in front of a, a white, just a white wall. Cause that was kind of the most neutral background in the room. I wanted to give the main character a neutral background, whereas the other personalities get their own kind of unique, like little things to represent them a little bit like locations. Um, where the hell am I? Yeah. What is this place? So this guy uh, is known as Lazy. He's the um, the lazy side of his brain that's like kind of tells him to just sit back and, and relax, you know, when he's procrastinating. Um, so I told him to wear just something that you would wear to lounge around in. So he's wearing sweatpants and sweatshirt, which I actually told him to get 
the the costumes. So he brought all the the costumes himself. They were all his clothes that, you know, I just described kind of what generally I was looking for, and he got all of them. So I think he did generally did a good job at picking things out. Um, again, shot is framed decently well. You can see the cornflakes here. Um, funny thing about that, originally it was supposed to be in the script. It said potato chips, like a bag of chips. Um, we're at my house. I'm I'm thinking, well, we probably have a bag of chips at my house. I didn't even think to, like, make sure we did. Uh, we go up to my kitchen and open, like, the cupboard, and I'm like, oh, there's no chips. And it's like, uh, well, what else can we grab? And he sees a box of cornflakes, and I'm just like, hey, what about a box of cornflakes? So that's what we went with, um, because why not? So, yeah. Anyways, continue favorite place on earth your dreams so what are you talking about this is the worst place to be right now yeah so i think generally it's cut together decently well it's not so much a dream as i don't know if i really have a lot to say about this section um here let me go let me go back to this guy so this guy is um the he's known as social um in the script uh he is the personality that you know, is, is all about like, yeah, you know, instead of doing, instead of, you know, when you're procrastinating, he wants you to get out there and live a little and, and meet people and have fun. Um, so I think again, his costume reflects that pretty well. He looks like he's like ready to roll out on the town, you know? Um, and I had him standing. So I, I decided to have everything in one room. Um, and I had him standing at the door, uh, to signify that he's like ready to leave um at any given moment so this is the door in that room um so yeah again i think the shots are generally framed well um i another another thing to point out too is in this section i didn't do any color grading uh like i did in the first section and in the final section um and i you know i i definitely could do something I feel like it could be cool to do some sort of, like, color grading or something visually to add to the, like, dreamlike quality of it, maybe. But, um, you know, that's just an interesting thought I, I'm having right now. But, yeah. So, I, I really liked the idea of just having the same person play all these personalities, which I think turned out really well. Um, I actually really like how that side of it turned out. But, yeah, generally these shots are framed decently. Um, they're all handheld, I think, um, which is weird i don't know why i did that um i think this is framed really well um so this guy is the this guy is known as uh, driven that is the personality's name uh, in the script um so i figured he's the one who's driven to get things done basically obviously um so i think it thought it made sense for him to be more dressed like in a more businessy like way um so i think that's a good costume for him so so yeah, and then a bookshelf in the background. So this is just a bookshelf that's in my house. I think it made sense. Um, so, you know. Uh, moving on. Um, I don't really know as it is your subconscious. What Where are the voices in your head? Wait, I have voices in my head? Yeah. Why else do you think you spend so much of your time talking to yourself? I think generally for being handheld, these shots are not too bad. Like, I, I'm, just, I'm honestly surprised by, like... I mean, there's not a lot of movement in the shots, so that definitely helps. They're, like, just holding still. But, like, I feel like a lot of times I'm a very shaky person with my hands. Um, so I'm actually surprised at, like, how well I was able to hold those cameras. Set. Like, there you do see movement, but it's not Wait, so too extreme. Like um, and then, oh, yeah, I used the method of... of so, so I, I of, like, him looking in the direction of who he's talking to and framed the shot that way in the rule of thirds of like, he's looking in a direction where there's more room on the one side of the screen. So I, I tried to use that method of shot framing uh, because, you know, you can't really tell based on this because the, the room where things are in the room isn't established in relation to each other. But from where he's standing, the direction he's looking in is towards that bed that the uh, the lazy character is uh, sitting. So, and that's who he's talking to. So, we, there was a lot of um, effort put into them looking in the direction of who they're talking to. Um, so, 
Yeah, if you see characters looking in different directions throughout yeah, it, that's stop talking why. To us and get out there and live a little. Okay, so I don't like... See, this shot was framed pretty well, um, but I moved it over a little bit so you could see a little bit on the side of this door, which looks like a mess. I think it would have been better if I still had kept it to where all you could see is the door, the edge of the door there. So I definitely could have framed that one a little bit better. Um, but, you know. Um, other than the... I think generally, other than that, I think the main critique no, I have in this section. A while. Really... I think the main critique I have in this section is things like lighting, uh, which again, like I said, I didn't really have the ability to do very well at the time. Um, I actually really like a lot of the dialogue in this. Um, I think it was really fun to the point where when I remade it, I really didn't change like any of the dialogue. Um, I changed a few lines here and there. Um, actually, I mean, I changed any line that was, like, gendered, so, like, when he says he to she, because in the, the remake, I actually, you know, the lead is, uh, female, so, it's my girlfriend, actually, in the, in the remake, um, anyways, so continue, continuing, um, I don't know if I have a lot more to say about this section, a better idea might be to continue, you know, I, I, I say I like the shot framing, and then I see a shot where there's something off. This shot has a pole slightly on the side of it, uh, which the last shot of him did not. Uh, and I think that's one problem with doing it the handheld route, is you it's hard to get the exact same framing that you got before. So if I had filmed these with the tripod, I could have set up the tripod, filmed all the shots from the exact same spot of each character, because, you know, that would I think that would have been more effective. But, um... Yeah, I think generally he did a good job with the acting, um, and it was it was a lot of fun. That that just this whole process was a lot of fun. I will say that. Um. So. Really? Why would you make a promise you know you can't keep? Shot framing still decent. So this shot looks tilted a little bit. Is it just me or does the shot look tilted a little bit? I don't know. I don't like that. Um. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I th think, I, one thing I will say is I think in this film compared to my first one, I think I did a lot better of a job of really, um, just playing to my strengths. And by that, I mean, really just doing the best with what I have, um, you know, actually putting thought into the things that I could control. Um, because obviously without all the proper equipment, there are things that I just couldn't really have much control over uh, in the filmmaking process. Um, but I still did as good as I could, despite that, I think. Generally, again, there are definitely moments where I'm like, eh, this could have been better. But, you know, <laughs> um, I definitely think this is an improvement on the last film. Like I said, promises you can't keep. <laughs> I can keep my promise. I um, need some inspiration. Yeah, and you know where the best place uh, to find inspiration is? I'll so yeah, I could probably skip ahead a little bit because I think a lot of this is just the back and forth of the dialogue with generally the same shots. Um, you know, I, I'm not here to really critique the dialogue of the of it and the acting. Um, I'm more here to critique the filmmaking, so. Um, yeah, if you, you know, you can, you can watch it if you want to see all of this, uh, inner character interaction and stuff. So on my YouTube channel, this is titled conflicting thoughts, 2018. Okay. I just saw, noticed something in this shot. Hold on. Not, not this shot, but the next shot. You're right. I'm going to get this It thing moves going. a lot. I only have like a minute or two left, but I got this thing. This is easy. I got this. Yeah. That shot, uh, the framing of this shot was really weird. So it started kind of more centered. And as he started saying the line, I just move, tilt it, and then he looks down at the very end. I think he was looking at the script for a second. And then I cut away, which, yeah, that one probably should have had a retake. <laughs> um, but that's okay. Oh, and then here, the, okay, this shot, I actually did some movement. And the reason being that he's looking around the okay. room to the, uh, to the voices as he's saying goodbye.
And so I did some movement as he's looking in the direction that he's looking. So I think that's kind of a, a cool little thing, I guess. Um, then you have all their reactions as he's leaving. He, <laughs> he just takes some chomps of his cornflakes and pulls up his remote. Um, and yeah, we're ready for the final shot, uh, which is probably one of my least favorite parts of this. Um, so it does the flash to white thing again, and then... Back to here. Yeah, see what I mean when I said the colors are so warm? Like, I cranked that up so much. And it was not a good choice, because it looks... Like, compare this to the beginning. Like, look at look at how cold those colors are. And then go right to the end here. Like, look at that. Uh, that's ridiculous. So, this is actually the only shot that's on a tripod in the entire thing, I think. Um, and that's because, you know, I was holding the camera for all the shots. And I'm actually in this shot, so I couldn't do that. Um, I think generally the shot's framed fine it's not horrible like it works it's just this is such a boring ending i thought you know and, and i really improved the ben, ending ben. in the remake uh oh you could see with all this this color editing i did it really just look at how red my face is and how red everything it's just so bad uh, but you can notice i called him ben even though that's actually my name uh that's because the whole point was that the script was based on the writer's psyche is what it says based on them so it was supposed to be based on like my own thought process when i am you know struggling with you know getting something done uh which is the idea of like you know i'm kind of like oh i need a break to go out and get some fresh air and go do something or oh i'm gonna sit down and be lazy and not do work on it and then there's another the other part of me that's like you know what i need to just push and get this thing done those are the three things that always play through my head when I'm like trying to get something done. Um, I was going to college at the time. So, you know, I was dealing with a lot of, you know, just college projects and deadlines and stuff. So that kind of thing. So, yeah. So it was just something that made sense to do for me. Um, but yeah, so this shot looks so bad, we mostly because of the color grading. If I had not done all this ready? horribleness with the color grading, Look at that. Also, I hate my acting in this. Okay, and do you at least have an idea of what you want to do with it yet? Yeah, I hate my acting so bad. Yeah, I think I do. There's a reason I'm not an actor. What is it? Do you have a title? This is this is not not good. I don't like this. I do not like my acting. Um, it it makes me cringe. Um, so this actually had so many takes of this. Um, and you can actually see that in, uh, there was a bloopers video that I uploaded for this. Um, you can actually see there was tons of takes of this. And that's because I kept messing up the line that I wrote in the script <laughs> myself. Um, I'm, I'm really bad with, with that kind of thing. Um, I, I would definitely say I'm better at acting now than I used to be because I actually took an acting class, a few acting classes uh, in college. Um, but... I'm still not great, I don't think. There's a reason I'm 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 a director, not an actor. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think the problem with this ending is it's like it's just he wakes up, this random character who we've never seen before jumps in and is like, Hey, you were supposed to write this screenplay. But you don't even have a title yet. Come on. And he's like, Oh yeah, I, I actually have an idea now. I got this. And he's like, Here's the title. And now I did like the ending where it's like, oh, he writes the title. The final shot is him writing the title. And the title of the film that he's writing is the title of the actual film you're watching. Conflicting thoughts. I do kind of like that. That's kind of a fun little thing at the end. Um, like that shot is the same shot at the opening. That's why I used this shot to open it up. So I could use it at the ending. Um, so yeah. It's... But again, I think the problem is there's just nothing interesting with the filmmaking here. It's just kind of, you know, there's no big triumphant moment, um, which I think that's one thing I really wanted to improve on when I remade it. And if you watch the remake, uh, which is titled Conflicting Thoughts 2019 on YouTube, um, you will see that there's a huge improvement on 
the finale, I think, um, where I had this, this big moment. Um, it's a big triumphant moment of like, yeah, she finally has an idea. Finally worked through the writer's block. This, he just kind of wakes up and he's like, what? Oh, you didn't even write it again. Oh yeah, I have a title. Here's a title. And that's it. And it's just one simple basic shot. Uh, nothing interesting. So I, I really don't like that. Um, but yeah, uh, that's, and that's the final shot. So, um, I don't really have much more to say. I mean, you know, we could, we could watch the credits, but, um, I mean, the credits are pretty simple. It's just, oh, see, I don't know why, but my media player is having some trouble, like playing things. It, like I, I press play and it takes like a few seconds. I don't, it's been doing that. Do you, do I don't know why. Wait, hold on a sec. Let me pull up the title page. Yeah. So there it is. Uh, but yeah, so that's, that's, that's it. That's the film. I, I, you know, I, this, this video is going to be definitely be shorter, uh, than my last one that I did. So based on the writer's psyche, except I think I spelled it wrong, but writer, Benjamin Klein, editor, Benjamin Klein, set hand, Nathan Klein. Oh, that's my brother. Uh, <laughs> so he was actually helping with like moving stuff around when we were in that room. Cause that room was a mess and we had to move stuff around a lot to, to film certain things. Uh, so I put him in as a set hand, um, uh, speaking of my brother, Nathan Klein, he actually has a YouTube channel called Nate the Great. Um, so if you want to, if you want to check that out, um, he just does a bunch of weird, funny things. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, cast. Yeah, there's one person in the cast. All the same person. And then an MTV production. So, yeah, that's that. That is conflicting thoughts. Um, I don't know. I definitely think it was an improvement on the first one. Um, the first film I did. It, it's, the concept is more interesting, first of all. Um, and I think the, the filmmaking, the shot framing and stuff, I think that was one of the biggest critiques I had of my first film, if you watch that video, was the shot framing. Um, and I can definitely tell that it, that has improved significantly on this film. I, I think that's because I actually, whenever I looked back at that one, I really didn't like a lot of the shot framing and I watched videos about framing shots and stuff. And, and I actually put, so I put, I definitely put more thought into it in this than I did before. I didn't put enough thought into it because there are definitely moments where I'm like, yes, I should have, you know, there's like a fraction of a pole in the corner this side of the screen that looks weird or like certain shots where there wasn't enough framing thought of frame shot framing put into it but definitely put a lot more um i think that's one of the biggest kind of things that i really started to improve on at this time um lighting is still bad uh but you know that again that's one thing that's hard to really critique because i did not have any good lights at the time i just i just didn't um, so it's hard to be like, yeah, well, lighting was bad. Well, yeah, because I didn't have any, anything. Um, one thing I did critique about the last film, too, the first one is the opening shot was a, a moving shot, was, was a similar type of shot where it started close up and pulled out, similar to uh, this opening shot here, if, if this lets me get to that opening shot, you know, where it starts close and pulls out. Um, I did much better with that this time around than I did on that first short film. Um, it's still, you could still see it swaying a little bit, a little bit of sway in that camera movement, but it's not at nearly as bad. Um, if you go back and watch the Christmas short film, you'll see what I mean. But yeah, so I think that's definitely something I improved on. I don't know if my movements were just smoother or maybe because it's not as long of a distance. I didn't have to like walk as far. So it was easier to kind of just do a slow pull out, uh, without walking as much, I think. So maybe that had something to do with it. I don't know. But um, yeah, um, one of the biggest things is that I mistakes I made definitely is the color grading. I went overboard with it. Um, if I had added a slight difference in the opening and the ending uh, of like the opening is a little bit more cold colors or more prominent and the ending was a little bit more warm just slightly, I think it would have been much more effective. Whereas what I ended up doing was just going way overboard with it and cranking that up, um, which is not a good, and I think I cranked up the contrast as well. 
because uh, as you can see, this chair, which is actually brown, it's not a black chair, looks like almost completely black, you know, and I think that's because I really cranked up the, the contrast in my color editing, which, again, increasing the contrast is something that can be good and effective to make an image pop a little bit, uh, but not if you crank it all the way up. That's actually something I used. To, I noticed in a lot of my older videos is there was a time where I did that. I would crank the contrast up like all the way, because so I was like, "Oh yeah, if you put turn the contrast up a little bit, it kind of makes an image pop a little bit more." So let me crank it up all the way. That's the way to do it, you know, without any thought into, you know, uh, what it actually looks like. Um, but yeah, so now nowadays I have a much better grasp on color correction and, and stuff. I, I'm still not like an expert at it. Um, I, I'm mostly good with just basic color correction. Um, but I, I'm definitely significantly better than I, than I used to. Um, and yeah, I mean, the other major critiques I have are things that I couldn't control, like camera quality. I mean, look at this. The quality of this shot does not look good. It just doesn't. Um, but that's because of the camera I was working with, really, you know, they, well, it, it's a combination of the camera I was working with and the lighting. Um, the lighting wasn't enough, you know, and, and that's one thing too, is, you know, if you have enough lighting, it, it allows enough light to get into your camera lens, uh, to really make the image look better. If, if, there's a low light situation and your camera's not good at handling low light situations, it's going to end up looking really grainy like this. Um, and I think that's the main issue is that I just didn't have enough light to really, you know, I didn't have good lights. I didn't have, you know, now I do have some lights. Um, I still don't have as much of a lighting kit as I would like. Uh, but you know, I have more than I did then. So, uh, yeah. Uh, but anyways, uh, I don't really have much else to say about it other than, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's the, the film. Uh, so the, I might do, uh, this is something I would like to continue doing. Um, I, I will be uploading these videos on the four years later on the day. Uh, so four years ago today, March 4th, um, this was when this was first uploaded to my channel. Um, so that's, you know, that's what I did with the Christmas one. It was exactly four years later on the day, and uh, that's what I did with this, and that's what I'll continue doing. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, let me know in the comments uh, what you think of this. Uh, if you learned anything from this um, about filmmaking, um, if you found this interesting, um, anything like that. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, I don't really have a lot more to say other than you know, it's, it's really nice to see how much I've grown and learned over the years um, and how much better I am at this stuff than I was back then. Um, so, yeah, it's really nice to see that. So, anyways, thank you for watching, everyone. Goodbye.